we're about to give Vooch some homework. Uh, we are going to get into our what new training segue, camp recurring segment do, called wow. Prove It. Do? Wow. It's what he did. Prove do. It. Prove It. Prove It. Um, all right. So this is where Just each of us picks it. one element to each member of this Bulls roster. Uh, one element of their game that we want to see them nail down or one thing that we want to see them accomplish this upcoming season. And because we just had a little film sesh with Coach Watson here, we decided that we would roll right into Vooch being our first player in our training camp segment called Prove It. Um, I will kick us off. Come on with it. And I know, actually, you know what? Before we begin these, let's take a look at that quote from Vooch at Media Day, mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence, if you please. He was talking that stuff. That graphic, when he was talking about the different ways he can be useful on offense. If you take away my three-point game, I'd still be a very good player mm. and still average high numbers. Say it. But if you take away some of the other stuff I do well, like rebounding, my inside game, my passing, my pick-and-roll game, when I get in the pocket and make plays, and I'm just a stand-up three-point shooter, I'm not as good of a player. Mm. That is a facts. astute <laughs> all, observation all of a player's own skills yes. and what Vooch brings. And we just saw a lot of what he just said in that quote in some of that film we were watching. Yes. The different ways that he could be deadly out of that high screen. Yeah, I just it's like a low-key flex by him. He's like, look at all these things I can do. If right. you take all these things away from me. <laughs> right. And it was also like when he said that, he was kind of, I mean, he, he didn't sound super annoyed, but it's like all... Anybody ever wants to do is talk about my three point percentage. Yeah. Here's right. All the other stuff I'm good at. Right. Like, I, I'm glad he stood up for himself in that moment. Mm hmm. So, all that being said, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to set a goal for Vooch regarding his three point percentage because, look, there's a reason why Bulls fans were hyped when we made that trade and acquired Vooch because he was a center who could do all of those things that Big Dave just laid out. The passing ability, the way he can switch the ball from the strong side to the weak side of the court with his court vision and his mm -hmm. accurate passing, get some you know buckets down low, all of those things. And it's not just about the three-point shooting. But the reason he became such a weapon offensively is because he worked on that shot sure. and became a floor spacer shooting 40% at the tail end of his years in Orlando. Vicious. That makes him a multi-layer offensive threat, Very a three-layer offensive threat. When you're shooting 40%, that's legit. Mm. When you're shooting 30%, less so. The less defenses legit. can yes. ignore you. Mm -hmm. They can dare you to shoot it, and they can gang up and double-team Zach, DeMar, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So while I do want to continue to see Vooch get touches inside that three-point line mm -hmm. and be used as a facilitator mm -hmm. as well as a guy who can get looks for himself inside. You know, the baby hook, you know, the little floaters, bodying, fakes like the up and under we saw on Lopez in one of those clips. Mm -hmm. I need him to pull that three-point percentage up. Mm -hmm. I need it. The Bulls need it. We discussed in our episode reacting to Media Day how Billy Donovan's answer to the very valid question of, yeah, three-point shooting? Didn't really add any this offseason. Mm -hmm. Billy didn't have an answer for it. Clearly, their hope right now to get better from being the dead last volume three-point shooting team in the NBA last season is internal improvement. Yeah. We need more volume and better clips from the guys that we're bringing back behind the three-point line. Vooch being better behind the three-point line must be a part of that. Yeah, and, and the reason his was also so glaring, as, as Will pointed out, is those shots are usually wide open mm -hmm. uh, when they when they get them for him. So to watch him miss those, you know, and and not hit those at a consistent clip is kind of what everybody was just re – it really put a light on it. You know what I mean? It really shined a, a huge light on it because all they saw was him missing wide open shots. Forget all the other great things he was doing. He's missing wide open threes. Why isn't he doing that? So <laughs> – I like that he took that personally. Shout out, Jordan. Yeah. I like that he's taking it personally, and he wants to go do something about it and shut some people up. Right. That's what it feels like. He just wants to tell some people, shut the hell up. and uh, <laughs> Drink a warm glass. <laughs> shut the hell up. Oh, dear. <laughs> right. Uh, you're in my world now, Grandma. Man, man, grandma. Uh, That's like, like Dontavious' comment saying, yeah, Vooch has to get that shot up. Give me at least 36% from three. Big Dave. Do me a favor and read what it says in my rundown for what uh, my prove it number for Vooch here. is. Don't have my goggles, but looks like that says shoot 36% from three. 36. Uh, I don't need 40% uh, from Vooch. Uh -huh. I need him to be competent and lethal enough from three-point land 
to make defenses honest, to mm. keep defenses honest, and that number that I am setting for him, yeah. my prove it item for Vooch this year, 36% from behind mm. the arc. I like Give it. me that. Let Give me, me 36%. How realistic do you think that is? Because I think a lot of people say, well, he shot, what was it, 40% on threes in 2020 21, mm -hmm. and down to 31.4%. Obviously, like massive drop off. Sure. But the year before he shot 40, his second All Star season, he was at 33.9. Before that, 36.4. Before that, 31.4. And that was really the first season in 2017 18 when he actually started shooting threes with any sort of volume. Right. So, right, to right. me, that 40% season might be the outlier. The anomaly. There. The anomaly there. I think 35, 36% is doable. And I think he should absolutely be, that should be like the target. That should be the goal. Right. But I'm curious for you, like, how realistic do you think that I th is? I think, and it's and it's why I even actually flirted with going with 35% th instead of 36%. Because even going from 31 and a half to 35, I'd take that. I'd happily take that. Right. Given this team's absolute dearth of three-point shooting. Ooh, dearth. Um, but, I, like, you're right to point out that that 40% season, that only happened once. Mm -hmm. It's not like we can hope that Vooch is going to average 40% from behind the, the arc for several seasons in the back end of his career. But 36% is doable when you look at some of those other recent seeding, uh, seasons leading up to that 40%. Mm -hmm. It's doable. That's why and you, you don't, don't set easy goals, right? Mm -hmm. Set challenging goals that aren't impossible. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm setting this goal for Vooch this season. I think you can shoot 36% behind the arc for a full season, Vooch. Prove it. Show it to me. Show it. And also, that was the most attempts he had at three also when he shot that 40%. Right. And so he's not going to have, at least I don't think he's going to be shooting six threes a game again. Well, so that's... Segway? Segway, Dave? Segway. It's a segue. Can I steal it? You go ahead. That's a pass, baby. For me. No look. That was a no look pass. <laughs> yes, that was. it was. Uh, for me, the prove it for me is I was going to say five and a half. Ah, maybe I still will say five and a half. I'm going to go with five and a half threes per game. Okay. That's my prove it number. I think six is just a little bit high. His career high was, as you were alluding to, 6.3 in that 2020-2021 season. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of threes. Last year, that went down to four and a half. The concerning piece for me here is that Vooch also in his media day and even in his exit interview last year said he didn't like the way that he was kind of floating around the perimeter and only shooting threes. He yeah. felt like he was kind of relegated to to being sort of that three-point specialist. Ironically, he was down like almost two threes per game from where he was with the Magic before he joined the Bulls. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm sorry, Vooch, but like you look at the spacing, you look at the the low volume that this team has on the whole. I mean, 27 threes per game mm. after Alonzo got hurt. That is just simply not going to do it in today's NBA. He needs to take a step up in terms of volume. Zach does too. Kobe does. Like all these guys that are capable, good shooters. I mean, if Vooch goes from shooting 31% on four and a half threes per game to 36% on five and a half, that completely changes the Bulls' entire offense. Facts. And and looking at some of the the clips that you played for us, Dave, mm -hmm. you know there are moments where he's taking shots a step in from the three point line. Right. And that number, that long mid range number, did go down from the year before. But I think he can clean that up even further and really start to s stretch out the floor because you saw, as we talked about, how hard it is to defend an action with Zach and Vooch or Demar and Vooch mm -hmm. when the defense has to decide between doubling Demar mm -hmm. and leaving Vooch open or playing it one-on-one -on -one and letting DeMar cook you from the elbow. Mm -hmm. It's a really tough decision to make, and yeah. the more accurate and the more volume Vooch launches from three, the harder that's going to be for defenses. So for me, in addition, this is playing off of what Matt said, five and a half threes per game is going to be my prove-it number. And if he can get that up to 36%, that's a hell of a season for Vooch. Mm, I like all of this. Well, then I guess I'm the one to end all this and end it perfectly because mine isn't even a stat. Or something I want to see. This is what I want from Nikola Vucevic. I want you to remind everybody that you're a top seven center in the NBA. That's okay. what I want you to do. Remind them you are top seven. I was going to say five, but I'm not going to even be like that. I'm going to say seven because of the age he is. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and he's on the recovery right here. We read the Hoops Hype top 25 centers. Vucevic was 14. Right. right? Mm -hmm. On a bad season. <laughs> you know, according to everybody, he's a bad season. He was number 14. Names that are ahead of him are like uh, Jonas Valanciunas, uh, Robert Williams, Al Horford, Miles Turner. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, he's better than all of them. 
All right. He might not do the defense like Time Lord, of course. Uh, Valachunas, I like his rebounding. He might not be like 20 Valentunas rebounds just like Valachunas. That, that was just a fail on their part. But I like him. I like Valentinus. Yeah, but he's though, not man. better than Vooch. No, he's not. He's not better than him. I'm saying he might. Those centers might do one or two yep. things that may be a little better than Vooch. But that none of to them the have that whole that you were trying to prove. Correct. And it's, it's none of them true. have that. Again, one hand you can count the number of centers who can do what Nikola Vucevic can do on one hand, and I guarantee you on that hand you're going to see MVPs and All Pros. So that's exactly who he is. This is the type of person he is. He is the multiple time All Star. This is who he is. Matt likes to use the word fringe all-star. He's definitely there for that. Mm -hmm. So I just need him to go out there, remind people, and show them, man. Show and prove, man. That's all I want him to do. That's for you. Thank want him you. to show and prove out there, baby. To show that he is the man and he is who the Bulls thought he was. Shout yeah. out Black Panther. Uh, <laughs> Lawrence, can I help you out real quick? The abbreviation for three-point attempts is just 3PA. <laughs> you don't need the dash or the T. Just trying to help you out. Yes. Trying to help you out. Get him. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't a get him. I'm just helping him out. Yeah, uh, Lawrence loves it, that. It looked like he was struggling <laughs> trying to figure out how, what that abbreviation oh, no, he was. Loved, look at the joy on his face um, right now. Oh. And it's funny that we were just talking about how Vooch is like, I'm more than a three-point shooter. And we just spent uh, the first 20 minutes of our show breaking down every which way that he is more than just a three-point shooter. And Will and I were both like, yeah, we know that, Vooch, and we love that about you. Yeah. But. But. <laughs> Exactly. He, he, this team needs him. This is a different situation for him than Orlando. He, yeah. He's said it. Billy has said it. Like He's not the man. It, yeah, <clears throat> you're not the man. You're not going to get the ball at the post every single possession. Right. And you have to sort of be, uh, like Ricky and Jason were talking about this on Cash Considerations, like you're going to have to be Kevin Love or Chris Bosh here a little bit. Mm. And I think, you know, going into year two, mm. he's, he's going to have to learn that. A little bit more of that. What do you, you know, mean by that? Like, kind of expound on that a little well, bit. Well, he's he's losing some possessions. He's losing some usage, right? Having to play along the two best players that he's ever played with, right? I mean, right. Zach and DeMar are Zach and DeMar the being highest usage. LeBron and, and Wade players. or LeBron and Kyrie. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so he has to kind of cater to that and make life easier for them. And then, you know, when the time is right, that's when he can really show off the, the post-play aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But he said passing is something that he does really well. I 100% agree with that, and mm -hmm. we've talked about it a million times. Just the way that he's able to dissect defenses from the elbow in that short roll game, that's making DeMar better. Mm. We saw it when they figured out how to, to beat the trap. It was because Vooch was a really good passer, and they kind of figured out how to do it. So that's on the rest of the guys to actually hit their threes from the corner, and it's on Vooch to continue being a good passer. Yeah. And then the scoring will come. I mean, he's, he's still the third option on this team. He's going to get his touches. Uh, he'll have plenty of... Uh, pick and pop threes. Like we saw what happens when the defense, like the Bucks, really load up on Damar and Zach. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be open. Yes, he is. And he is more than capable to to take advantage. And that's why you get three star players, right? You don't want Correct. somebody that's just gonna spot up and space the floor. Correct. You want somebody that can do a little bit of everything. And that's that's where Vooch is gonna have to sort of fit in. And that's why they're doing the the continuity plan. Mm -hmm.